the spirit starring drum, the ear piercing five, the royal banner, and all quality pride pumping circumstances of glorious war. Music has always been an integral part of warfare and the soldier's life since the dawn of history. But today, we poured the rocket of time travel to travel into the past and answer the question, what was the role of music in war? Stay tuned to the end of this video. The function of music in war has always been twofold. One is a form of communication and second as a psychological weapon. Among the oldest references to the latter role is found in the chapter 6 of the Old Testament's book, Joshua, with an exceptionally detailed description of the deployment of Ram's horns against Jericho to the oldest fortified known human settlement to archaeology. If the Ram's horn work, well, let us see. History tells us that even the instruments on which the music is played have themselves acquired great symbolic power. A regiment's drums are second only to its colors as an emblem of honor and tradition. In the 18th century, the act of enlisting was actually described as following the drum. Even today, those ancient symbols continue to be evoked by titles such as the Dev R. Palmer's Summons of the Trumpet, a study of strategy in the Vietnam War. In the story of Jericho, some people argue that although ram's horns do indeed make a powerful blast of sound, to use the phrase favored by King James first translators, they can hardly be assumed to have been sufficient in and of themselves to level Jericho's seven meter high walls of thick and raised stone. What do you think yourself? Was that enough to bring such a thick and high wall? Well, as usual, leave your comments below. Still, the biblical account of his campaign makes it clear that Joshua was a most subtle general who compensated for the numerical and technological inferiority of his men. At least some of Jericho's Canaanite garrison had iron weapons, whereas the Israelites were entirely of bronze. By means of intelligence gathering, you might not think of a battlefield as a great place to hear music. It has probably never been anyone's first choice for a constant venue. Even so, wars have always inspired or even required music in the battlefield. And the American Civil War between the years 1861 to 1865 was no different. Music was actually played in the battlefield. Joshua compensated by means of intelligence gathering, hit and run tactics, and psychological warfare. Barring a highly coincidental earthquake, as some scholars claim, the story's description of Jericho's wall collapsing was most likely allegorical. Even if the exact nature of Joshua's strategy remains conjectural, however, it seems clear that his elaborate scenarios, 
staged in view of the defenders and climaxing with his priests blowing their horns in unison, fired up his warriors and weakened the Canaanites' will to resist. So as you can see here, most commentators and scholars argue that if the story of Joshua is true, then the blowing of the ram's horns might have just acted like a psychological weapon more than a physical weapon as it's claimed to have brought down the walls of Jericho. Exploring the conflict's varied soundtrack from patriotic marches to haunting ballads offers a window to the spirit, story and emotion of a traumatic time in the American history during the Civil War. Laying the ground for music's integral role in war was America's rich and expanding musical life in the preceding years before war. We are told that there was a great deal of music making in every part of the United States of America. That because well before the invention of iPods or even radio, people relied on themselves, their families and their communities for the music of daily life. What do you think? That they had already developed love for music. The culture of music was evolving just before the outbreak of the American Civil War. And so when the outbreak came to be music had a very special role in the battlefield. That is what history tells us. History tells us that apart from the growing interest in music, the education of the growing middle class invariably included music lessons and the printing of easy sheet music proliferated to meet the demand of parlor musicians. Meanwhile, appreciation for performed music was also growing and with wealthy citizen support, concert halls and music halls or societies expanded. History tells us that as more as 3 million men and boys from North and South America marched to war in the 1860s, so did America's music. One general by the name General Robert E. Lee, commander of the Confederate Army, is reportedly to have said, I don't believe we can have an army without music. From marching music to camp songs, from concerts to taps, music moved the armies through daily activities, rallied morale. You could often hear fiddles, flutes, and banjos, and other easily made musical instruments in households across the economic spectrum. Wealthier households might have had a piano, but as a musical instrument and as a status symbol to show that they will belong to the high class. But here we see that music had already started to gain roots among the people of America just before the outbreak of the devastating civil war. After the collapse of Rome in the West, its tradition of martial music was preserved and refined by the Eastern Empire in Byzantium. There was no shortage of such practices among Rome's Celtic enemies who for centuries charged and later marched into battle accompanied by their own array of horns, drums, and bagpipes. So integral were bagpipes to the Scottish martial repertoire that Britain outlawed the instruments 
after the defeat of Prince Charles Edward Stuart's Scottish army in 1746, only to lift the ban for the benefit of its own Scottish regiments soon thereafter. In his 1521 treatise, Libro della Arte della Guerra, The Art of War, Soldiers also often sang their own songs in their evening encampments for comfort and camaraderie. Both Greek and Roman armies used brass and percussion instruments, including the ancestors of the modern cornet and tuba to pass messages for the march in the field and also in their camp. Greek armies on campaign employed musicians to accompany poetic recitations of odes and themes designed to remind soldier and citizen alike of the valor of past heroes. Indeed, music found a place in the battlefield. Niccolo Machiavelli wrote that the commanding officer should issue orders by means of the trumpet because its piercing tone and great volume enabled it to be heard above the pandemonium of combat. Cavalry trumpets Machiavelli suggested ought to have been a distinctly different timber so that their calls will not be mistaken for those pertaining to the infantry. Drums and flutes, he overheard, who are the most useful as an adjunct to discipline on the march and during infantry maneuvers on the battlefield itself. The music in the battlefields also, we are told, it helped organize the movements of the troops, that is think marching, and even conveyed combat orders to soldiers who are trained to recognize these commands. By the way, did you know that music made it easier for one to be enlisted into the army? Remember for you to be enlisted into the army there were requirements that you had to meet maybe a certain age and also other physical characteristics but during those times if you were a musician or played a musical instrument you could easily be enrolled to go and play the music on the battlefield. Of course it's a risk, but I think the people at that time really were looking forward to that. So history tells us that although the minimum age for enlisting a soldier was 18 years, boys as young as 12 years were allowed to enlist as musicians. I hope you heard that right. The limit age was 18 years, but boys as young as 12 years who had musical skills would be enlisted. Of course, you may think that maybe they did not play a big role in the fighting and winning of the battles. But remember, as we have seen before, that music will act as a psychological weapon to weaken the enemy while the muscular soldiers fought the physical war. And indeed, you know that if the psychological weapon is used correctly, the enemy will be weakened, lose morale, and then you combine that with the physical assault by the muscular and energetic soldiers then you are on the right path 
of winning the war. And indeed, history tells us that the generals and commanders in chief at this time of history understood this scientific concept and they utilized it to the full, playing music on the battlefield. What an irony! As usual, feel you leave your reactions and comments below as we continue to learn from this amazing channel where we bring you amazing facts about music that will always leave your mouth open. Remember to support this channel by hitting the subscription button below and the notification bell so that you won't miss any entertaining videos from this amazing channel. Now continuing with our research, we are told that there are many types of instruments that were played in the battlefield by musicians, and this included the five, a high-pitched wooden flute similar to the piccolo. We have In the American Civil War, musicians who played official roles in the military can be divided into two categories. The first category is the field musician, and the second is the members of the military band. Yeah, we had military band. Field musicians included the five and drum corps with the marching units, and also the buglers that accompany both the cavalry and infantry in their daily activities. These field musicians, as expected, played an important role in the daily activities of wartime life. From wake-up calls to signals for lights to go out or light out to roll calls, yeah, and also the grill or the military grill as the bands help maintain morale and rainfall spirit and also resolve among the soldiers on the battlefield. We are told that musicians did whatever was needed. They staffed ambulances, they tended the wounded. And in cases where need be, they fought as the war raged on. So if you are deployed as a musician into the battlefield, you, of course your main role was to play a musical instrument. But when need be, you will be called to fight the battlefield. Most military bands consisted of brass and percussion instruments in their most sections of the bands. We have drums, snare and bass drums that could be strapped to the neck or back of the carry. The bugle, similar to the trumpet, but without keys or valves, which was a plus for cavalry musicians riding on horseback who needed to keep one hand on the reins. For marching music, larger bands performed as common. Commanding officers inspected and addressed the troops. They will also present regular concerts and entertain soldiers in the camp. The instruments typically included cornets similar to trumpets, sax horns, which are upright valved brass instruments of varying sizes and their speech ranges such as soprano, alto, tenor and bass, tubas, percussion instruments, snare and bass drums, woodwinds, that is the fire, piccolo and clarinet. However, we are told that as the years moved on, music lost some of its functions in war, especially with the increased technological advancement. With the invention of the radio, commands will be issued directly to the general. Well, 
What do you think about the role of music in war? As usual, feel free to leave your comments below in the comment section. Remember to hit the red subscription button below and the notification bell for this channel so that you won't miss any entertaining videos from this amazing channel where we give you facts about music that will leave your mouth wide open. See you in the next video.